The West Virginia State Penitentiary was a cold, cruel place. From its opening day in 1876 to its closing in 1995, the correctional facility stood out, landing a spot in the Department of Justice's top 10 most violent correctional facilities list. Day after day, the inmates in the prison fought one another, killed one another, and did nearly everything in an ongoing war to be the alpha dog or the big man in the prison. If climbing the ranks is a hard enough task for the prisoners, and trust me, it was, then what about the fierce men and women who had to reduce and maintain that everyday criminal activity? Life as a prisoner in the minuscule five by seven cells was excruciatingly tough, but nothing compares to the difficulty of being a West Virginia State Penitentiary Correctional Officer, constantly trying to control and protect the lives of inmates while also protecting their own lives. Gangs were littered throughout the different halls and sections of the prison. Oftentimes, members would barter various goods, such as cigarettes, makeshift weapons, and other tools for the death of certain people. The never-ending stream of threats was one topic correctional officers knew all too well. Chuck Gent, a former CEO of the penitentiary, laid the law of the land down as best as he could. Along with maintaining the prisoner's behavior, he also had to fix many issues on the fly. In an interview with Officer Gent, he told us a story about how brutal the penitentiary was. In his words, I walked into 300 inmates arguing and fighting about how they wanted to retaliate against the COs because one inmate didn't get his stuff back. It took me five minutes to go get his stuff and then it was over. He proceeded to tell us that, at one point, a group of prisoners broke thermometers and poured the mercury from them into Gant's coffee cup in a vicious attempt to murder him. The constant toll of death being around every corner was something that affected him even after his retirement. To this day, Chuck Gent watches his back everywhere he goes, because had he not done so as an officer, he could have lost his life. Now, if any part of you thought that being a correctional officer was a man's job, think again. Maggie Gray was a female CEO at the penitentiary who worked in most vicious and nefarious sections of the prisons, North Hall and South Hall. She had the same issues as to Officer Gent, with the added rape threats and suggestive comments she'd always get from the prisoners. It did come with a perk, though. If a woman treated inmates properly while still being in control, the inmates respected her ten times more than the average CO. William Red Snyder was the leader of an infamous group of prisoners, the Aryan Brotherhood. He had his quarrels with Officer Gray, but respected her and held her in above-average regard. One day, while Officer Gray was patrolling the visitor's room, she noticed that an inmate wasn't there. Upon searching for him, she discovered him hiding behind a wall naked with plans to rape her. Immediately determining his intentions, Gray called the penitentiary to be called back up. After discovering what happened, Red was a very angry man. A few days later and the man who was hiding was found dead. Of course, everyday life at the penitentiary had its toll on Officer Gray too, but she had a great support system both during and after her time working there. Up until the closing of the prison, both officers had their lives in jeopardy and experienced things in the dark halls that they would never forget. Life in jail as a prisoner may seem rough, but nothing compares to life as an officer, treading carefully through halls and corridors where his or her life could be gone right before their eyes. For more information on life inside the West Virginia State Penitentiary, head over to its website www.wvpentours and take a tour whenever you get the opportunity.